the Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. This is the regular meeting for Thursday, March 7th, 2024, and it is 1 p.m. We will begin with the flag salute, and I'll ask City Clerk Christy Ramos to please lead us in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Christy, would you continue on with the roll call? Of course. Councilmember Mulatto? Present. Councilmember Marker? Here. Councilmember O'Keefe? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Weil? Here. Mayor Downs? I'm here. Um, I'll begin today by uh, sharing some sad news that we learned this morning. Uh, Brian Nastandi, longtime public servant in the Coachella Valley, well known to many of us, uh, has passed away. Not sure if that was this morning or, or last night. Uh, Brian served in the California State Assembly. His father served in the Assembly before him. Uh, his wife, Gina, serves on the Palm Desert City Council. So uh, service to community runs uh, in that family. So I would ask you to stand for a moment of silence to remember Brian Nastandi. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, first item on the agenda today is a presentation. This is a presentation from the Riverside County Transportation Commission, RCTC, and uh, our council member who uh, serves on the commission, uh, Meg Marker. I'll ask Meg to go ahead and make the introduction for RCTC's presentation today. Meg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. David Knudsen is the Director of External Affairs at Riverside County Transportation Commission, of which I have the pleasure of serving our valley as one of your commissioners. And David leads RCTC's public and legislative activities, including community engagement. He will present RCTC's draft traffic relief plan, which is currently out for public review and comment. Thank you, David. Great. Thank you, Council Member. Mayor, members of the City Council, I'm pleased to be with you today on behalf of Ann Mayer, our Executive Director, and Aaron Hake, our Deputy Executive Director, both of whom are out speaking about the traffic relief plan and other areas of Riverside County. Thank you for the opportunity to present this very important plan before you, the traffic relief plan. Before I begin, I just want to also highlight uh, Councilmember Marker's participation on the commission. She's been um, excellent in representing the city and uh, has provided some quality uh, input and has been very successful in helping us move transportation issues forward in Riverside County. Well, you all know about RCTC, but for those who don't know, I'd like to give just a little bit of background so that your residents and those who might be watching for the first time know a little bit about RCTC. Next slide, please. The Riverside County Transportation Commission is your countywide regional transportation planning agency. What does that mean? It means we work with all of our cities and the county to bring resources and funding and deliver transportation projects for the residents of Riverside County. We work on providing regionally significant transportation projects for the benefit of all of Riverside County residents. As part of our program, we implement Measure A, the twice voter approved half cent sales tax measure for Riverside County for the benefit of Riverside County residents. This half cent sales tax measure first adopted in 1988 and then renewed in 2002 provides dedicated transportation funding for the Riverside County residents in Riverside County. Part of our Measure A program and the efforts that we work with the state and federal, uh, our fe state and federal partners we support uh, our public transportation operations, including Sunline, Metrolink, and other transportation operators and service providers in Riverside County. And then, of course, you all know we own and operate the 15 and the 91 express lanes. Those are toll lanes in Riverside County. Next slide, please. So RCTC is your team. We've been working with the city of Rancho Mirage and others throughout the Coachella Valley and including Blythe and Western Riverside County to deliver really meaningful transportation projects for our residents. Yeah. Interchange improvements, actually reconstructing interchanges, again, supporting our transit operations, uh, highway improvements, expansions, 
and then of course supporting our local roads and streets. And then you all are, are all well aware of the work that we're doing on what we consider a transformational project, bringing passenger rail from LA Union Station to the Coachella Valley, uh, also known as uh, our CV Rail Program and Service. Next slide, please. So part of what we are trying to do is really stay in tune with what your residents and the residents of Riverside County are saying is their transportation priority. What do they see as their number one issue related to transportation? And so last year we did a statistically valid scientific poll uh, and we asked Riverside County voters what are their priorities for transportation. You can see on the screen before you 93% said keeping roads in good condition is their number one priority. Pothole repair. Potholes. Everybody's talking about potholes. 91% uh, pothole repair. 89% reinforcing highways, roads, and bridges from flooding and earthquakes. This is particularly important out here in the Coachella Valley and in, in Rancho Mirage. We've seen what natural disasters, flood, and blow sand can do to our infrastructure. Your residents see that as an issue. Improving safety, 87% and keeping senior student disabled veteran bus fares low at 84%. The point here is this is just a representation of a whole host of priorities that we, we ask residents to provide us. These are the top ones. Next slide, please. So over the last few years with this poll and ones that we've conducted beforehand, the commission has drafted what's called the traffic relief plan. The traffic relief plan identifies countywide transportation projects and services for the benefit of Riverside County residents in Riverside County. As I mentioned, it was developed with years long public input and it represents billions of dollars in transportation investment, transportation investment both in capital infrastructure and transportation investment also in public transportation infrastructure and services. It updates the 2020 commission adopted plan. The commission adopted the plan in 2020 uh, but it wasn't funded and it wasn't funded in part because it was on the on the eve of the COVID-19 public health pandemic. There was uncertainty and so the commission decided let's pause for a moment, let's approve the plan, we won't seek funding for it. Next slide please. So let's talk about what's in the plan. The plan identifies eight transportation investment categories uh, for, for this region, for the Coachella Valley region. Uh, in our plan, as is in Measure A, CVAG, our good partners at CVAG, administers the funding distribution. They do that through the Transportation Project Prioritization Study, you know it as TPPS. And it also looks at how do we mitigate for vehicle miles travel, support transit-oriented uh, development housing, and the CVMSHCP. And what's really unique about the plan is that it's flexible. All the categories allow for some flexibility so that projects can tap into each funding investment category to pay for a project. You can see on the screen here of the eight investments, highways, regional connectors, active transportation, public transportation, safe streets and roads, flood and blow sand, commuter assistance, and environmental mitigation. I think you know most of these, but commuter assistance I think is one I'd like to highlight for a moment. We don't have that out here. We have in Western Riverside County. Those are the those quick uh, tow truck operators that are helping motorists who get stranded on the side of the road or a fender bender that's preventing the flow of traffic. We help them get off out of the main line and off to the side of the road so that traffic can keep flowing. This map uh, and these projects that I'm about to talk about were um, part of the traffic relief plan and were developed in partnership with CVAC. So we've had a good and close coordination as we develop the traffic relief plan. Next slide, please. So here's just a couple of examples of what's listed in the plan for the benefit of this region. Improving connections on I-10 and Highway 111 and 74. Of course, pothole repair, local road repair, safety improvements, traffic management systems. Uh, we're talking about improvements on Bob Hope Drive, Monterey Avenue and Date Palm Drive, the I-10 bypass, you know, in the Cabazon area. That would bring some significant relief as, as congestion continues to build up on I-10, extending Avenue 50. Bridges, again, helping to help, helping our infrastructure be more resilient against natural disasters. Um, public transportation, Coachella Valley Rail. The traffic relief plan identifies the necessary funding to complete and bring service to Coachella Valley through inner city passenger rail. And you can see a whole host of other projects there I won't get into, but I do wanna highlight something very important just for a moment that Council Member Marker brought up at our 2023 annual workshop for RCTC. And, very eloquently elevated the issue that traffic on the I-10 is 
is becoming more and more of a problem. And not just, it will, and through the whole past, through the Sangagonial Pass moving east, it's becoming more and more of a problem. What can we do, the question was asked, what can we do to help alleviate that congestion burden on, the, on those that are traveling and then the surrounding communities? Well, part of that discussion led to a series of conversations about potentially express lanes on the 10 freeway, for example, that would help get traffic moving faster, guarantee time travels. And so we're looking and studying that right now to determine what is the feasibility, both from a physical standpoint and from fun and a financial standpoint. So that's in process and is part of the traffic relief plan. Next slide, please. So you might ask, David, this sounds great. I'm looking at the plan. This is really amazing stuff. It's gonna benefit our residents. How are we going to pay for it? The commission can decide to ask Riverside County voters to approve a sales tax measure to fund the projects in the traffic relief plan. Uh, over the next 30 year planning horizon, if a one cent sales tax were to be implemented to fund these plans, it would generate approximately $25 billion uh, to invest in the traffic relief plan. If we invest $25 billion over the next 30 year planning horizon, it supports over 168,000 jobs with the vast majority of those jobs coming from Riverside County residents. It generates a workforce income of over $10 billion and the total economic output of $30.9 billion. This was provided through an independent economic analysis through Beacon. And so we've used this as part of our, as a part of our outreach. The revenues raised in each geographic subregion of the county stay in that geographic subregion. So for the Palo Verde Valley area, we're looking at over a 30 year planning horizon, approximately $100 million. For the Coachella Valley, $5 billion. And for Western Riverside County, $20 billion. And this is divided up based on population share of the county. Next slide, please. So part really important to this is not just delivering what I would consider world-class transportation infrastructure. It's also making sure that what we use is accountable to the taxpayers and the residents and the voters of Riverside County. So built into the plan are mandatory audits and mandatory reviews. Because this is a local plan with local control, none of the funds for the traffic relief plan, as is with Measure A, none of the funds can be diverted by our friends in Washington, D.C. or Sacramento for other, for other projects. These are dedicated funds for transportation and no more than 1% of the funds can be used for administrative salaries. And that's really important because I think for our residents to know that 99%, 99% of the funds for the traffic relief plan will go directly back to infrastructure and transportation services. Next slide, please. So I started the presentation with what residents in our county are saying is their transportation priority. I'd like to conclude the presentation now with just giving you what our polling data shows with how they feel about transportation funding. 67% of Riverside County voters initially support a transportation funding measure. Basically, they see that there should be some funding. 69% of Rancho Mirage, Indian Wells, and Palm Desert voters initially support a one cent sales tax measure. And 82% of Riverside County voters across the county see a need, some or a great need of transportation funding. Next slide, please. And so right now we're out here asking city councils and your residents to take a look at the plan and provide us with feedback. We are really interested to know, does this work? Are we missing anything? Can we add something? Uh, it's really important as we as staff work to finalize a plan to give to the commission for a final, final recommendation and approval that in, we try to incorporate what residents are thinking about as it relates to their transportation system and how we can help them how we can help meet their priorities. So trafficreliefplan.org is the place to go to check out the plan, to leave a comment. Uh, you can also, there's an email there, trafficreliefplan at rctc.org, and of course a QR code. So as I conclude, you know, transportation is the vein that builds us and connects us all together. It helps, uh, helps us get to work, it helps us get to school, our jobs, it keeps our economy moving. If we can really help create a robust interconnected transportation system, that's our goal. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor, Council Members, for your time today. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, David. Thanks for being with us today. So I'm, I'm guessing that a couple of us might have a question or two. So what I plan to do is uh, I'll ask my Council colleagues if they do have any questions or comments for you. Uh, and then um, um, 
Uh, we won't put you through the ringer any more than that. Uh, uh, we'll, you can take your seat. Uh, our city manager does have a few comments for you after council member questions. And I'll start with uh, council member Mulatto. <laughs> Hi there, thank you for coming today and presenting this. Can you do me a favor? Can you define for our residents uh, local voice and local control? Sure. What, how RT, RCTC interprets that? Great question. The commission is made up of 34 members representing each city in Riverside County and each member of the board of supervisors. Together that represents our local that's local control, uh, local decision making. Bringing the voice of this city council to the commission is a really important element of that, and we try to uh, we, we try to honor each of those voices uh, equally across the commission. So in this case, what we're talking about is the local control is from the regional commission perspective. Now, I, I yes, that's okay. I think it's very, very important that certainly you've canvassed um, and, and done your survey, but it's so, so important for the residents to realize while the half cent tax has been successful and typically, and I come from a municipal government background, uh, working with the city of Cathedral City, typically, you know, the consultants will say if you're going to go for a half cent, you might as well go for one cent. And, and I can understand why that is, but I think it's very, very important for residents to understand what local means, and that means local maintenance, local decisions, and um, and while we have representation on the various boards, it's it's something that really needs to be discussed in a consensus with a, an entire city council. And then we would ask Council Member Marker to convey <laughs> our decisions on that. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Weil. Uh, thanks for being here today. Nice to see you again. Uh, as you mentioned, um, I was the representative uh, to the RCTC representing the city for a number of years. And you point out that going back a few years ago, the tax was raised uh, as an issue at the RCTC, and it was decided not to go forward. Now. Uh, based upon that, based upon the timing, uh, most of the cities, uh, irrespective of any survey, felt that the timing wasn't appropriate and that their constituents uh, weren't uh, in a frame of mind to absorb an additional tax. Uh, so, of course, uh, that's something that we have to consider is are our constituents uh, ready uh, to add this burden uh, on to what is going on. Naturally, uh, your survey indicates uh, various things that are necessary. No one can disagree with that. Um, so I'll be interested in, to hear a reaction from our constituents because that's our job here at the city council level. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ted. I've got a couple of questions. So first, just to, so that we all have the right framework uh, and reference point for the taxes that are collected and that are proposed to be collected. So currently, it's a half cent sales tax that goes for Measure A. And if I understand it correctly, about 50% or it is 50% of those funds uh, here in the desert go to CVAG for CVAG programs. 35% uh, of those funds come to the city and about 15% uh, then go to Sunline Trazen. Is that correct? That sounds about right. And so you're not proposing an increase from uh, a half a cent to one cent, you're proposing a full one cent increase above the current half a cent that's collected. Mayor, this would be a brand new, a brand new measure. Correct. Got it. Understand. Okay. And um, as far as the way in which those funds are, those additional funds to be collected, if the uh, if the voters pass the uh, the increase, then uh, what what's your uh, expectation as to how those funds will get distributed to which organizations and in what percentage? Right now, those funds would go to CVAG and then would be prioritized through the TPPS. Okay. All right. So unlike the current half cent where uh, a certain percentage is specifically identified to be delivered to the cities, that's not the plan at the moment with respect to the 1%. Very good. Yes. So the, you're exactly right. That isn't to say that through input from this council and others that that wouldn't change in the final adopted document. You just might get that kind of input, I suspect. Councilmember Marker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, I do have a couple of questions. Um, first, what is the current status of the CV Rail project? Great, thank you for the question. CV Rail, I mentioned, is this transformational project, or one that we see as transformational, uh, for really all of Riverside County. Uh, right now, we are in the we're trying to gear up to begin tier two environmental document, which will look at station placement. It'll look at uh, the actual delivery of building the track, uh, which we see to take place in current uh, UP right of way. Uh, it'll look at a whole host of grade separation issues. So we have identified the funding needed to begin that tier two document. And we're anxiously anticipating starting getting, getting a procurement out later this year to, to start that process. And uh, in the next stage, how many uh, stops would you foresee in the Coachella Valley? Uh, I don't have that memorized off the top of my head at the moment, but there would be somewhere in, Coache in Coachella Valley, or City of Coachella, Indio, potentially, Mid Valley, uh, the Beaumont Banning Pass area, uh, and then moving westward. Uh, into downtown Riverside and then beyond into re into uh, into LA, uh, Orange and LA counties. So I think approximately four is what they've been discussing, or the the uh, commission. That does sound SMA about right. Five, mm -hmm. and then who is responsible for the financials for the maintenance? Um, because from what I understand, this will be um, separate from MetroLink and taking place in the Valley um, and having CVAG as the umbrella. Will CVAG be responsible for the maintenance, or will each of the cities that host these um, depots or stops be responsible for the financials it, for upkeep? And right, right now, it looks like, and as we begin the preliminary discussion, that it would be up to each city that has a, a station stop to do the maintenance. Right now, RCTC owns and operates and maintains all of the MetroLink stations in Riverside County. Um, that may not be the case with the CV rail station stops. I think that is also part of an ongoing conversation. Okay, great. And then one last question. What is the estimated time from point A to point B, saying Los Angeles to Indio or Indio to Los Angeles? It would be approximately three hours. Uh, the idea is we're trying to make it comparable to, to vehicle travel time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You're being with us today, so thanks very much. Um, and we, we won't uh, uh, bomb, bomb you with questions any further, but our city manager does have uh, some suggestions for input. I'm sorry, I missed, I'm, I'm, I'm advised that I did a disservice to our newest council member, uh, Michael O'Keefe. Michael, I am sorry, please. No apologies, and thank you for your presentation, and no questions. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank Great. you, David. Thank you. Isaiah? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, and David, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, you know, anytime we uh, talk about a regional tax, uh, there's many agencies that contribute to our transportation system, and I think our history, especially with Measure A, proves uh, that we've done a good job here in Riverside County of investing in various ways within that transportation system. So uh, what I wanted to focus on today was really kind of this presentation, this new tax. And in, in my opinion, this is probably one of the most significant items uh, that we've seen since we're doubling the Measure A tax. And Measure A has done a lot of good. And uh, the voters renewed it. And uh, with that renewal, they even allowed maintenance. So in the original version of Measure A, uh, it was just for new projects. And then uh, when the voters renewed it, we went to the voters and said, hey, we've done a really good job of building. We still have building to do, but we also need to maintain what we've done. So let's allow for some maintenance activities with our Measure A's. And of course, the voters uh, extended that tax as well. So uh, if you could pull up my PowerPoint, so, you know, um, when you get into a tax increase, right, what an agency is going to do is uh, they're going to hire firms and they're going to come in and they're going to survey residents and they're going to get a temperature for uh, and they're going to tell the agency, hey, you know, after, you know, polling your uh, residents and your voters, here's what they're saying, here's their priorities. 
Uh, here's how we recommend you communicate to them based on what they're saying to us to have a greater chance of them saying yes to your tax increase. Now, when it comes to sales tax, you know, one of the uh, um, pieces, of it, pieces of advice that these consultants will give you is, you know, if a, if a voter is going to vote yes or no on a sales tax measure, you know, having it be a half cent or a one cent doesn't make that decision flip from a yes to a no or a yes to uh, to know, right? It doesn't change their mind. What, you know, people are going to say yes to a half a cent, and they're going to say yes to a one cent, and the people that are going to say no to a half a cent are going to say no to a one cent. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't add any value, but to the agency, it doubles your money, right? You're taking uh, your tax and you're doubling it from a half cent to a one cent. And so, um, you know, to the agency, it's a very powerful tool. You're doubling your revenue. And to the voter, it really doesn't make a difference. That guy's going to say yes to it, whether it's a half or a 1%. So, um, you, you know, when we talk about tax dollars over 30 years, you know, uh, transportation agencies are very good at listing out projects on why they need that much money. So I have no doubt that, you know, the original version of this was proposed at a half cent, you know, through years of this dialogue, they increased it to one cent, and they still have the list to justify the one percent. So, uh, you know, David, I pulled this from your slide, but as you can see, over the 30 years, this one percent tax for Riverside County is going to generate 25 billion, right? So here in the Coachella Valley, that's five billion over uh, the 30 years. So what this slide does is it just takes this proposed new tax and uh, it kind of shows you, okay, you know, the amounts that we were seeing, uh, the middle column there for average per year, you just take that top number and divide it by 30. Uh, in today's dollars, you know, we can kind of look at measure A as an example in today's dollars. So measure A is a half cent sales tax. So you can look and see what we get for that half cent sales tax in measure A, and you just double it, right? This is gonna be a 1%, so you double it. So if this proposed measure passes here in the Coachella Valley in today's dollars, right, that's gonna be about 110 million a year for transportation purposes. Obviously over time, you know, 30 years from now, that number is gonna be higher which is why the average is a little bit higher than what it is represented in today's dollar. <coughs> so here's a breakdown of our current sales tax in Rancho Mirage. That's on the left, uh, this proposed tax. So essentially what you see is at the bottom there, our total, the sales tax rate in Rancho Mirage. So when you go buy something that is subject to sales tax is 7.75%. So if this 1% RCTC tax passes, then that would take our sales tax to 8.75%. As you see with the current breakdown, I highlighted three lines. So one of them is the Bradley Burns local general fund amount. So of the 7.75%, the city of Rancho Mirage gets 1% of that. So when you look in the city budget, when we list a sales tax number, that's that green line. That's 1%. So that's $7.4 million that Rancho Mirage gets in our general fund from that 1% of the 7.75%. The orange is obviously the existing measure A, been very successful. And then the yellow is this new proposed 1% tax. So let's take a look at road funding, right? So what we have on this sheet is for the city of Rancho Mirage, we get three types of road funding. This is how we maintain roads within Rancho Mirage. So we have gas tax, we have SB $1, and then we get a portion of Measure A. Again, that half cent sales tax that is existing. The city gets that directly. It's 35% of the Measure A tax. So in total, you know, you can say on average, it's been uh, obviously over time, it tends to go up because things get more expensive and it's a percentage of the cost of items. So, you know, in this year's budget, we can say for City of Rancho Mirage, we're gonna receive 2.1 million in transportation fundings that we use to take care of our streets and roads here. 
this new RCTC proposed tax is gonna generate $7.4 million out of Rancho Mirage. And right now, the city of Rancho Mirage would get $0 of that, how this is being proposed. The interesting thing about that is when you look at the number of miles of roadways we have to maintain in Rancho Mirage, there's about 90 miles of roadway that we have to maintain. So under the current RCTC proposed tax structure, our city is gonna generate 7.4 million for this new transportation tax. And all of it goes to CVAG. And the city of Rancho Mirage gets zero. Well, in Rancho Mirage, we maintain, we the city maintain 90 miles of roadway and CVAG maintains zero miles of roadway. So the agency that is actually maintaining the transportation system in our city and generating from our city $7.4 million, even though we have the maintenance obligation on all the streets and roads and CVAG has none, they're getting 100% of the funding, which really doesn't make sense if you're talking about wanting to manage certain aspects that we talked about and that were important to the voters. So you know, in the PowerPoint presentation, you know, a lot of this stems back from your public opinion polling. And so as was pointed out, you know, maintaining roads in a good condition was number one priority. And number two was fill the potholes. Okay, well, so what do we put that we're gonna do with this extra 1% tax we want voters to approve? Well, we say, hey, we're gonna do pothole repairs. We're gonna do local road repairs. We're gonna do safety improvements and then we name some roadways here. The problem with that is of this money, the agencies that are doing those functions don't get any of the money. CVAG does. And CVAG doesn't fill the potholes in Rancho Mirage, we do. The reason that those items are being highlighted is obvious be because they were very important to voters. Those were the number one and number two items in voters' minds. So if you want voters to go approve a new tax where they have to pay more for everything and you're gonna generate $5 billion for the Conchella Valley, you're gonna go tell them what was important to them. Well, we're gonna use it on maintaining roads and filling potholes because that was one and two on the public opinion survey. When in reality, the measure gives all the money to an agency that doesn't perform those functions. So there seems to be a little bit of an imbalance here. And again, uh, you know, to, to be fair, right, Measure A, in my opinion, works well because it is split between different transportation agencies. So I think it would be ridiculous for me to sit up here today and say that CVAG should get zero dollars from this tax. That is ridiculous. There are some really high priorities, regional priorities. You know, top two on my list, are we are closing Gene Autry and Indian Canyon every other day. We can do better, fix that, right? That is a regional project. That is where our regional dollars should be going for. So I'm not trying to say CVAG should get zero. I think that's ridiculous. Just like I think it's equally as ridiculous to tell the agencies, your cities, that are actually maintaining those streets and roads and filling the potholes that they're gonna get zero. We need a little bit more of a balance here for how this transportation network actually is maintained. So again, just going back to the public opinion survey. So, you know, it just begs the question, right? There's a lot of prominence in these surveys to keeping roads in good condition, filling potholes, but the funding doesn't reflect those priorities. The other area that you know, I think needs some clarity. And I understand because you see the same language in Measure A. So we got a great example that we can point to in Measure A. So, you know, these consultants that we hire that basically tell you, here's how you go sell a tax increase to the voters and give you the greatest likelihood that they're gonna say yes. So, hey, you gotta tell them you're gonna do, you gotta dangle the carrot. What's important to you? Okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna go do those things. And then you have to tell them, hey, there's some accountability here, right? Um, and so three areas listed here, right? Independent audits and mandatory reviews, local voice, local control. This doesn't go to Sacramento and DC. 
And then this last bullet point, which is quite commonly uh, used also in the Measure A language, that there's this cap of 1% on administrative salaries. That sounds great, right? Wow. 99% for projects. Whoa. Awesome, right? It sounds great. But let's use Measure A and let's look at the reality of that statement, right? And, and, and local control to me is not regional control, right? Local control is your city. Right? Residents want to walk into City Hall and say, hey, my road is a mess, or I take this road every day to work, go fix it. What you will commonly hear from cities is we don't have enough money to do that. Sorry. We can't fix your road. Right? So local control is not regional control, which is how this tax is set up by giving all the money to CVAC. Your cities in this tax absolutely need to have direct allocations of funding because we do those things, not CVAG. And that's exactly how Measure A works. So let's go back to this 1% administrative salaries cap, right? So, okay, here we go. Let's, uh, I'm pulling some of these pages from the RCTC budget. So here's the front page of their budget. So as you go to page 33 of the RCTC budget, right, they list the cap on Measure A. Administrative salaries and benefits cannot exceed 1% of Measure A sales tax revenues. Well, that sounds familiar. That's exactly what they're saying with this tax. Sounds great, I like it. 99% for projects, you only get 1% for administrative salaries. Okay, sounds pretty reasonable, right? Well, when you go into the RCTC budget, they have 81 full-time equivalent positions. So essentially, uh, 80, 81 employees, 81 FTEs, I shouldn't say 81 employees, 81 full-time equivalents, right? So, okay, um, in today's dollars, right? So if you take what they budget for Measure A, and again, that's a half cent, it generates 280 million bucks a year. Measure A does, great. You double that for this 1% tax, right? This 1% tax in today's dollars is gonna generate approximately $560 million. So a 1% cap on administrative salaries and benefits, that's $5.6 million that they can use towards salaries and benefits. Well, according to the RCTC budget, their total salaries and benefits budget is $7.5 million. So they can grow their payroll with this 1% cap by almost 32%. It's not a control at all. And this is part of my problem when government does these tax measures is what they feed the public over and over again is not a reality. They don't need to grow their payroll by 32%. That 1% cap is not a control at all. Now, I, you know, I don't believe RCTC would use the full 5.6 million from this, but they can. You know, the problem I have with it is like we heard today, they promote it as if it's some level of control. When in reality, what it does for them is it allows them to shift numbers on their side and allocate more cost over to this new tax so that they get to free up money over here, right? But yet they sit here and tell us over and over again, this is a control, this is good. It's great for them, I agree, right? I, I would love to be able to grow our, our payroll by up to 32% and sit here and tell everybody what a control that is. The other last point that you know, I'm just gonna make here, and I'm a CPA, so forgive me, I used to audit <laughs> cities and counties. <laughs> so as a CPA, the word audit means something very specific, right? When they say that they're gonna conduct these independent audits. So very qualified people and the concept is within an audit is somebody independent of the organization comes in and reviews your books and says, hey, are you doing things right? Is it accurate? Are you reporting the right information? Do you have controls? Those sort of things. So the, the key thing that I just wanna to touch on is Measure A has these same components, right? They all say that they take mandatory independent audits within Measure A, which is an existing tax, they've been doing it for years, they're actually not following through with that. 
So right here we have highlighted from their budget, right? I'm gonna go to the second sentence where it says, RCTC obtains audits of Measure A and TDA funding recipients. So that's us, we receive Measure A. We're one of those recipients. And in an audit, the independent auditor dictates the procedures to determine in their opinion what they have to do to give an opinion on that audit. That's an audit where the client does not put reins on the independent auditor. That independent auditor gets to pick what they ask for, pick how much they ask for, pick when they do it. They have the discretion in an independent audit to dictate their own procedures. What RCTC is doing is it's called an agreed upon procedures. That is not an audit, folks. An agreed upon procedures is where RCTC takes a set of procedures and they dictate to the independent auditor, here's the only thing you can look at. When in reality, that measure calls for independent audits, just like they're highlighting today, they're gonna do with this one. So again, another one of these controls that sounds really good and is in practice not being implemented even on the existing tax. The other puzzling part of all of this is with Measure A, the only agencies that go through this agreed upon procedures, not an audit, are your cities. Well, we're only 35% of the money. Why aren't you doing it on the other 50%? Why don't you need to look at that? And then beyond that, when you look at the procedures that RC, RCTC dictates to the auditor in this agreed upon procedures, it says that the re recipients can use 8% towards overhead. And if you go over, just let us know a justification for why. But what about that 1% cap that we heard earlier? And again, they're not applying that to the recipient agencies, and they absolutely should. So what I'd like to close with is, at the end of the day, this is again from the RCTC budget, and the three amounts highlighted are for the Coachella Valley, how Measure A is allocated, right? So you see the top number at 27.5 million bucks. That's the 50% of Measure A funds that go to CVAC. Then the next line is local streets and roads. That's 19.3 million. That's the 35% that goes to your cities who actually maintain the streets and roads. And then the bottom amount for specialized transit, that 8 point, roughly 3 million, that goes to Sunline Transit Agency. So again, we've already kind of set this process up with Measure A, and so kind of puzzling to me that the agencies that actually maintain your streets and roads and you know do the top two things on your public opinion poll, which were keep roads in good condition and pothole repair. Everyone's talking about potholes, right? Well, your cities do that. And in this new tax, we get $0 to do that function. So either change your talking points if you're gonna keep moving forward with the funding like this, or let's use Measure A as an example and really properly fund our transportation system. There is no reason why one agency out here in the Coachella Valley should get $110 million a year in current dollars because they don't do everything for transportation that this plan says we're gonna do with the tax. So again, you know, I would hope that during this feedback period, you know, they, they would begin to pull back these layers because what you hear as a taxpayer, they hire professionals to say, here's how you talk to them, here's what you say, Here's the carrot you put in front of their face to get them to say yes. When in reality, when you really dig into this, it's all going to an agency that doesn't do your top two functions. Oh yeah, and by the way, that 1% cap allows them to grow their payroll by almost 33%, 32%. That's no cap at all. So from my standpoint, you know, if this thing continues on, I think the city has a heavy burden to go educate our taxpayers on what this measure really means because, again, from my viewpoint, giving one agency out here in the Coachella Valley 100% of the funding when they don't maintain a single mile of roadway within our city is a huge mistake. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
Thank you, Mr. City Manager. So, uh, David, I hope you will uh, carry those messages back uh, to uh, RCTC. Um, and uh, Meg, I hope that uh, you will do as, as I would wish you would do, uh, that is to make sure that all of your um, counterparts uh, on uh, the commission are aware that we are strong supporters of making sure that there is an adequate amount of this funding that comes to the agency that actually does the work. That's our message, David. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. Hope you don't feel we've been too rough on you. <laughs> Good. All right, uh, we will move on. Uh, next item on the agenda is non-agenda public comments. This is an opportunity for any member of the public for, to speak for up to three minutes on any issue that is not on the agenda. If you do wish to speak to an agenda item, please wait until that, agenda, that item is called for and you will have your opportunity to speak. So I will ask the uh, city clerk to please handle non-agenda public comments. Certainly. The first speaker is Melissa Ritchie. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, City Council members and staff. I'm here today to say goodbye. And thank you and your staff for your enthusiasm and support for historic preservation over the last few years. When we bought, Jim and I bought our house in Rancho Mirage in 2012, if you'd told me then that I would write a book, Mod Mirage, about the city and set up a non-profit preservation group, Preservation Mirage, which would grow from a handful of homeowners to a membership of 1,500, I would have thought you were crazy. I also wouldn't have anticipated giving talks at the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory or kick-starting neighborhood tours of the city during Modernism Week. But that was then. Now, 12 years on, with various projects accomplished or documented, my husband Jim Ritchie and I are set to move back to England. Sadly, a death in the family means that we will be leaving even earlier on March the 19th. Firstly, I want to give my heartfelt thanks to Ben Torres, even though he's not here today, who, as the coordinator for the Historic Preservation Commission, has fielded most, if not all, of the historic nomination documents that I've put in front of the Commission for consideration. His unflappable, efficient, and always courteous demeanor has made this process painless and sometimes even enjoyable. Ben is truly gifted at summarizing the lengthy tomes I place before him so that both commissioners and city council members can easily understand the contents and their significance. Secondly, thanks to Gabe Codding, who has provided invaluable support over the years, often in the face of some kind of adversity. <laughs> Gabe has helped promote Modernism Week events in the city, has helped Preservation Mirage navigate some of the city's more um, complicated paperwork, and of course was instrumental in working with us on the recent Pink Elephant celebration. Thank you also to city council members for their recent support of preservation activities during Modernism Week. It was truly refreshing to see Mayor Downs, Council Member Malotto, and Council Member O'Keefe at several of the Rancho Mirage neighborhood events during Modernism Week, including the Preservation Mirage tour of homes at Tamaris Country Club. I know their support and enthusiasm is valued by members of the community that organize these tours, which can take months to put together, but are a huge benefit to many of our neighborhoods. So really, thank you so much. It was, your presence was very much appreciated. Last, but certainly not least, I want to remind city council members that an updated survey of historic resources has been promised, but currently not actioned. I had hoped that I would be here to see the updated survey commission, but I trust that Preservation Mirage and the Historic Preservation Commission will continue to keep this topic ever present on the city's agenda. It's my ongoing wish and hope to make sure that more of the truly historic homes in Rancho Mirage are identified, continue to be identified and preserved by their homeowners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you, Jim, for being here today. And best of luck on your travels. And thank you for being with us in Rancho Mirage for so many years. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Christy. Susan Ragsdale. I have an 
announcement to make to particularly Isaiah Hagerman, who is the supervisor for public housing at Rancho Mirage. It's been five years since we've had an experience together, and it's just about killed me, Isaiah. I often wonder if you didn't get the memo, the one from God that says you're not supposed to hurt old ladies. You have hurt me very badly. You have illegally defrauded me of my home, and you have also committed gross negligence. You've supported a criminal behavior in the property manager and area manager for all the Rancho Mirage places. Five years ago, in November 2019, these two men who live next door to me, who drink every day and smoke cigarettes all day long, started abusing me like this. I kept a public, I kept a record, every single thing they did and how it made me feel. Yeah, Isaiah, I did, and you know it. I have stacks of paperwork this high. I call it the paper trail from Whispering Waters. Most of you are new here, and you didn't go through this experience. That's why I'm addressing Mr. Hagerman, because he's a supervisor for housing. And he should know the law of his job. And that is that I should have been provided with a safe way to redress hostile environment harassment, which was misogynist and vulgar all the time, all the time, every day. I kept a record. This is the record that began, 106-page report on bullying at Whispering Waters, which I began in March 2019, five years ago. Nobody responded to my pleas for help from these terrible people. This guy, he's calling me a dick here and saying, you're gone, okay? This is the kind of language they use with me constantly. They lived right next door. I had no escape. And then the property manager in February 2021, she allowed these people to move in without checking their landlord verification at Vista Serena in Palm Springs where they lived and had a stack of complaints about angry verbal abuse and vandalism. I got the brunt of these incredibly predatory, obsessive, terrible people who ended up assaulting 10 women and one young grandchild of a, a resident. At, but they went after me mainly because I was their next door neighbor. That's serious. When you get somebody like these people coming out constantly to assault you, and, the, and these people, and these people joined forces and encouraged each other, it was a big deal. They amused themselves constantly for years. Susan, I'm I do years. want to give you an opportunity to get through your, your statement, but please. My statement please wrap up. is that. I will take this to the media at this point because you can't fight City Hall. I, I'm sorry, but you hurt me so badly. You made me homeless. I was living in my car. I was here on September 7th. Somebody told me that after I left, begging for you to save my life, to give me an apartment because I deserved it. I'm completely innocent. They said, Isaiah said, we tried to help her. Oh, yeah, right. No, you tried to murder me. You persecuted me. You a malicious prosecution, you crucified me, and you almost killed me. Thank God a wealthy resident of Rancho Mirage saved my life and started giving me housing six months ago, but it's temporary. I can't depend on this, this couple forever. I can't. What? How could I? I don't even know them. They're very sweet to me. Anyway, I'm taking this to... The media, I'm going to find an investigative reporter who wants to take this all the way to national news because it's totally newsworthy. It's a social issue. I was just about murdered. It's Thank you, Susan, for your surprising. comments. I, and you know, the thing is, I'm not myself because I've been going through ever since January 2020, all documented in writing, extreme traumatic. Dying still because I'm homeless and it's so scary. Thank you for your time. Christine.
Uh, good afternoon, um, City Council and <clears throat> Administration. Well, I already uh, wasted 30 seconds. Well, when transportation, uh, when the word transportation is mentioned, what comes to my mind is the dirty seats on the buses. May I suggest that everyone here take a soapy cloth and clean those seats on those buses. What also comes to my mind when you mention the word transportation is, of course, vehicles. And I'm going to bring up <clears throat> recalcitrants. We are now entering the hot months of the year. And people, oh, before I go into that, I want to um, uh, thank Isaiah and the men from San Francisco on their long speeches. Maybe Isaiah should be running for public office. So getting back to transportation, and I got one minute left, another thought that comes to my mind is Grocery stores. People go to the grocery stores. They come out from their air-conditioned homes, and they get into the air-conditioned cars, and they drive to the grocery store, and they leave the car running so that while they're shopping, when they come out, their cars are cool, and they don't have to get hot. In the meantime, those cars running, the air conditioners, are spewing out poisons, poisoning the atmosphere. So this body here concentrates on stuff, meaningless stuff, and the important stuff they don't address, like put in is trying to blow us all up, even without spewing gas from cars, but with atomic bombs. Thank you. Brad Anderson. Good afternoon, Brad Anderson, City of Ransom Mirage. Uh, I know to say talk on transportation, because that's where I came today. Uh, I, I happened to sit through that presentation at the Palm Desert City Council meeting, and, and, and the city manager is, is on point with his comments. Uh, it's just another tax. It's not used wisely. Uh, I, was, I appreciate uh, his detailed report. He's like the sixth council member, I guess. Uh, it's unusual. Uh, it's degrading uh, to certain aspects, but it had to be said, and I'm glad it did. Uh, but uh, again, uh, no new taxes. We can't afford them. I can't afford them, uh, and, and especially if they're not going to be allocated correctly, which they're not going to be. And uh, and just I'm going to highlight on the last speaker. Uh, I, I think really let's let's reach out. I know the city manager said they did. We should have aspects of our population, the older population in senior housing in our city come to the extremes that they have to uh, use this podium like I do, I guess. Uh, but uh, let's make an effort. Let's make an effort to correct whatever's going on. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Dominic Moonhart. All right. Hello, uh, council members, Mayor Pro Tem, 
and mayor, as well as the city manager. Um, I just wanted to echo those sentiments that the city manager made over um, the measure. Yeah, that is true. The cities take care of the roads, the sidewalks, the potholes, and the county takes care of the unincorporated communities, which they've been doing a bad job at it, but uh, Ranch from Ranch has been doing a good job on it. Um, it is true um, what the city manager has said, uh, and it is degrading a little bit that um, you know, with the whole potholes in the road situation. But um, with the CV rail, how long is that going to take? That's literally my answer. But the CV rail, only one track for the CV rail, when we could make two tracks. Yeah, I understand money, money, money this, but they're saying they're raising the tax for the pothole, for transportation and they can't even, you know, it, it is, it's just degrading. Um, I also wanted to echo some of my public comments from Sunline um, because I know uh, Council Member Mulatto's on the Sunline board and she's heard this, but I know uh, Council Member Marger is on the RCTC. She's one of the commissioners. So I had to take the Metrolink to Corona on Tuesday. Um, line 10 from Sunline starts, sorry, starts, um, the first bus leaves Indio at 5.20. The first train from San Bernardino downtown station leaves at 4.29. That's the first train. The last train for the morning leaves at 4.54. The first bus on line 10 arrives at 7.35. So I'm waiting four to five hours for the one and only train uh, to leave San Bernardino. And the, literally the next station is Riverside at one o'clock. Yeah, that makes no sense. And so um, I don't know who appoints people to the Metrolink board. I wish I knew that answer, but all I know is that no one in the Valley represents us on the Metrolink. Uh, that needs to change. And um, I know RCTC does not, pull, uh, does not control the Metrolink. So um, if we can um, echo those sentiments to, the, to Riverside, uh, to, to the um, commission, my time is already up. So I will I'll, uh, send more comments. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was the last speaker card. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak on something that is not on the agenda? That was the last speaker. Thank you, Christy. Okay, we will now move on to council board member comments and or reports. And I'll start with council member O'Keefe. Do you have anything for us today? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And also thanks for all the comments this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, first, I wanna congratulate all the honorees at the Ramy Awards last week. And the chamber puts on a good show, and the awards were well-deserved. Um, it was a personal honor to be able to present the Barbara Sinatra Distinguished Citizen of the Year Award to Jamie Kabler, who does so much for our city. Um, this is a busy time of year, and sometimes the smaller events get overshadowed by the flashier events, but there are three small events that I'm going to attend, and I hope I see some of you there. On Wednesday, March 13th, uh, coffee will be hosting Coffee with a Cop, uh, where you can meet the public safety officers who perform such a vital part of our safety for our city. Uh, it's very informal, no speeches or grand programs, just conversation and getting to know one another. It's at 9 a.m. at Coffee, K-O-F-F-I, um, right here in 111 in Rancho Mirage, and there is free admission. On Saturday, March 16th, the city will have a ribbon cutting for the eight new pickleball courts at the community park at 10 a.m. My avid, and I won't say fanatic, but my avid pickleball friends are very excited about that and there's free admission to that as well. And finally, there is not a small event, but it's a wonderful event. On Saturday the 16th at 7.30 p.m., the excellent Coachella Valley Symphony will perform a special concert celebrating our city's 50th birthday party at the amphitheater 
featuring music by Frank Sinatra, who was so important in our city's history. Uh, the symphony is terrific, and they never disappoint. Uh, and the amphitheater and its programs are treasures in our city, and I'm glad that the symphony calls it their home. It's good for our city. And there's free admission to that concert as well. And finally, I'd like to say let's all celebrate Women's History Month. I grew up with strong, uh, independent, successful women who shaped my character. And I appreciate the strong and independent and successful women I work with today, including the women up here on the dais. Uh, this month is a great time to recognize and honor the achievements and contributions by women throughout history. It's also a great time to respect, love, and cherish the women in our personal lives. Tomorrow, March 8th, is International Women's Day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for all those comments. And I see Lieutenant Espinoza and uh, uh, our community service officer, Kyle Albanicius, in the back uh, of the room. And I'm sure that they appreciate your mentioning coffee with the cops. So we'll look forward to that uh, when it comes up. Uh, okay, Council Member Marker. Thank you so much, Michael, for your comments. And no, Mr. Mayor, I have no further comments. Okay, thank you. Um, Council Member Mulatto. My comments were, mo were mentioned earlier. I'm fine uh, for the, the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor Pro Tem Weil. Thank you, Mayor. Um, several weeks ago, we had, uh, it was mentioned here, we had the Grammy Awards, uh, which uh, were orchestrated and arranged by the Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce. <coughs> it was an outstanding event. I'd like to start off with showing you the video of that particular event. So if you would uh, put that on at uh, the present time. Okay. Uh, for some reason, uh, they don't have it. Um, if, the, if they find it, we'll put it on because it's a, a fabulous uh, video that, uh, that our department prepared. I think they're searching for it. In the meantime, let me tell you about it. Uh, the Rancho Mirage Chamber of Commerce welcomed the community. There were 370 attendees in celebrating the strong leadership of our local business and professionals in our community. The honorees for this particular event were the veterans of the foreign wars of the U.S. post-1534, the small business of the year was the Rancho Mirage Florist, medium business of the year, Las Consuelas Nuevas, who are also celebrating a 50 years of being in the city. The large business of the year was Gulf California Broadcast Company. Ambassadors of the year were Candace Stankus, Gulf California Broadcasting, and Diane Taub, Airborne International, the Rising Star Award, the Von Cleveland Foundation, the Business Person of the Year, Julie Olaf, General Manager of Sensei Porcupine Creek. I mean, a already internationally recognized spa. Um, the Chairman Achievement Award was to Matt Johnson, uh, President of Johnson Commercial, and as uh, Council Member O'Keefe said, the Barbara Sinatra Distinguished Citizen of the Year went to Jamie, Jamie Cabler, founder of the Rancho Mirage Writers Festival, celebrating 10 years of history. I had the pleasure of presenting the Impact Award to the McCallum Theater. The McCallum is the premier performing arts venue serving the Coachella Valley and presenting more than 100 performances annually with artists from the worlds of Broadway, comedy, dance, storytelling, and every genre of music. The theater has been an integral part of our Valley's history since it celebrated its grand opening in 1988. 
with a nationally televised all-star gala tribute to Bob Hope, a star-studded event with performances by Van Cliburn, Lucille Ball, Sarah Brightman, and the Alvin Alley American Dance Theater. Attendees were your average run-of-the-mill people like Ronald and Nancy Reagan, Gerald and Betty Ford, Walter and Lan Lenore Annenberg, and many more. Gosh, I don't know how you can reach for higher stars. Formally established in 1997, the McCallum Theater's education, performing arts, left an indelible mark on the community, impacting over one million students and residents through enriching arts education and performance experiences. Each year, the city of Rancho Mirage partners with the McCallum to present programming and offer access and discounts to its residents. And I'd like to say how proud we are and how fortunate as a city that we're able to contribute in this area as far as education is concerned. Since the inception of this program, the city of Rancho Mirage has now contributed to the education of students desirous of pursuing the performing arts to the extent of a million one hundred thousand dollars. Mitch Gershenfeld began his career as a musician in his hometown of Philadelphia, and Mitch is the president and CEO of the McCallum Theater uh, since uh, 2012. Mitch has been a valuable and important partner with the city. So again, the Rammies were inspirational. It's great to honor all of the people that make our city so special. And I'm thrilled to be able to announce that we are going to be continuing our contribution. And the other wonderful benefit is on the programs that we, we sponsor at the McCallum. On all of the unsold tickets, we distribute those to our affording, affordable housing residents. So it serves two purposes. We're educating the youth in the performing arts field, and we're also benefiting, frankly, the tenants in our affordable housing properties that may not have the opportunity to participate in this area. So it's a great night, a great tribute to everyone, and again, we thank the chamber for their outstanding work. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, sorry about the video. We can go ahead and play that now. <coughs> Hopefully with sound. <laughs> <laughs> They're out to get you today, Ted. I guess. They Rancho are. Las Palmas, right here go. in the heart of the Coachella Valley in Rancho Mirage, celebrating our Outstanding Business Awards dinner and board installation called the Rammies. This event highlights all of the amazing businesses, nonprofit organizations, leaders and dignitaries in our area. It's a celebration of everything in Coachella Valley. We're highlighting some of our amazing businesses, our nonprofits, some of our large companies, small companies, and even business leaders of the year. The Rammies is our Emmys of Rancho Mirage. It is the best way to celebrate our local community in Rancho Mirage and celebrate and cherish everyone who works so hard for this community and this valley. Small business it really is the heartbeat of, of every community, so you know it's important to recognize everybody that's played a part. And it just really brings the whole community together, uh, and, and we, we just really love, love being part of it. Some of the honorees include Business Person of the Year, Julie Olaf, Sensei, Porcupine Creek, the Heart of Rancho Mirage Award, Children's Discovery Museum of the Desert, and Barbara Sinatra, Distinguished Citizen of the Year, Jamie Kabler founder of the Grand Mirage Writers Festival. We look forward to continuing to support small businesses in our community, and next year we celebrate our 70th anniversary big. We welcome you to come on out and be a part of it.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That, uh, uh, that really tops it off. Katie Stice, who heads the chamber as a, you know, as a work of force, she's outstanding, and, and the mayor swore in the new board for the coming year. So it was a terrific, a terrific night, and I think we all left there very energized. Thank you, Mayor. We did leave energized. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. I've got a couple of things that I wanted to talk about today. First, I think our Director of Marketing, uh, Gabe Cotting, uh, do you have that, uh, that prop? It's an interesting prop, I think. So what Gabe's gonna put up uh, on uh, the dais is a flag, and here's what's important uh, about this flag, or interesting about the flag. That flag was flown over the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. on, Oct I'm sorry, August 3rd of 2023. Um, now, the importance of that date is that is the specific date that was the 50th anniversary of the city of Rancho Mirage. The first council meeting in the city of Rancho Mirage was held on August 3rd of 1973, and we mark our anniversaries since that first council meeting. So that flag was flown over the Capitol on our anniversary on, um, uh, on August 3rd, our 50th anniversary. Uh, council, I'm sorry, council member, Congressman, um, Calvert was kind enough to deliver that to us about a week or so ago. So I wanted to show that to everyone, and uh, it is the case that uh, we're, uh, Gabe, I guess we're doing some remodel to our uh, trophy case, and we'll put that out in the lobby at some point. Yes, the second thing I wanted to talk about was a, a report to my council colleagues and, uh, and to the city about uh, uh, Visit Greater Palm Springs. Uh, I am the city's um, appointee on the executive committee for Visit Greater Palm Springs. Uh, and visit, visit Greater Palm Springs has determined that the, jet, the, the Joint Powers Authority has determined that Visit Greater Palm Springs will engage in an economic development activity uh, designed to draw new industry to the desert to diversify uh, our uh, employment base, to diversify our sources of revenues. Uh, and we've had to do a couple of things uh, to accommodate that economic development activity. First is um, at the last uh, meeting of the Joint Powers Authority, we uh, passed a resolution uh, adding Coachella as a member. Coachella had never been a member of Visit Greater Palm Springs. They are now, and they will work with us on our economic development initiative. And the second thing that we uh, had to do was to uh, work on some adjustments to the Joint Powers Authority agreement that will come to the city soon uh, that adds or that authorizes um, the um, visit Greater Palm Springs to engage in the economic development activity that, that uh, they're about to engage in. So those are the two things that I wanted to talk about with respect to, uh, to visit Greater Palm Springs today. And now we'll move on to city manager comments. Are you out of steam or do you have anything else for us today? <laughs> I think I've had enough fun today, so <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> All right, consent calendar. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, you have four items on your consent calendar for consideration. Item number one is to approve the February 15th, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Item number two is to adopt resolution number 2024, next in order, approving the updated calendar year 2024 salary schedule to comply with the CalPER statutory and regulatory requirements for compensation, earnable, and publicly available pay schedules. Item number three are contracts. Item number four are demands. And before we get to council comments or questions on the consent calendar, I'll turn this over to the city clerk to handle public comment on the consent calendar. Thank you. I did receive one speaker card regarding uh, agenda item number three from Brad Anderson. Great. Thank you again, Brad Anderson, city of Ansmaros. I just wanted to talk about contracts today. Uh, I noticed you had one in there for uh, kind of takeover lease. Agreement, I believe. Uh, maybe it's not a lease, but you're going to take over management of your solar panders at the city hall on the uh, at the city yard, which is in Thousand Palms. Uh, anyway, uh, my concern with that is you're going to pay roughly like five hundred thousand dollars for those, um, and 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 they were put in in 2013, and I guess. Apparently, on the staff report, you're going to save $4,000 a month by doing this and uh, operating expenses for those. I'm just kind of shocked because of that $4,000 savings. I mean, how much is all those solar panels really uh, supplying to save $4,000? Again, I may not know. I do go through your your register, your check registers, and. And I see the power bills from Southern California Anderson, uh, so I can assume they're very high. But uh, anyway, I'm just kind of interested, and I think the people should probably know 
because uh, you have the money to spend that, but not for elections and other assets. So I'm just interested in that. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was the only speaker card. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on a consent calendar item? That was the only speaker. Okay. Do any of my council colleagues have uh, any questions or comments on the uh, consent calendar? If not, I'll ask for a motion. I'll move to approve the consent calendar. May I have a second? I'll second. Moved and seconded. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. We will non now move on to public hearings. Uh, the first public hearing is item number five on our agenda. The subject is resolution approving adjusted rate schedule for Rancho Mirage Energy Authority and delivering the staff report will be our senior management analyst, Jessica Pulliam. Jessica, your report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, honorable council members. The item I'm here to discuss today is a proposed resolution to approve adjusted generation rate schedules for the Ranch Raj Energy Authority. Southern California Edison implemented a rate adjustment in January. RMEA reviews and adjusts alongside SCE to ensure customer savings um, reflect and reflecting current power market costs. This current adjustment before you is a reduction in generation charges. Since its launch in May of 2018, RMEA has provided cleaner energy and saved the community over $3.6 million. The solar and battery rebate program, which is exclusive to the Rancho Mirage Energy Authority, has returned close to $800,000 to our community. RMEA offers unique programs to include 100% premium renewable energy option, as well as the new Power Choice program, which has been developed in partnership with Tesla, this offers solar and energy storage solution, solutions at no upfront cost, providing peace of mind of backup power and stabilized energy costs. We are currently also offering a chance to win an electric bike. Just go on to ranchermageenergy.org to learn more and to enter. RMEA is always available to assist residents and businesses with any inquiries regarding their electric bill or any RMEA program. I can be reached at City Hall or by email at information at ranchermageenergy.org. In light of this information, staff recommends that the City Council approve the adjusted RMEA rates alongside the SCEs to ensure customers continue to experience overall savings. This concludes my presentation and I'm available for questions. Thank you for your report, Jessica. Let's go to um, public comments and I'll ask the uh, City Clerk to handle public comment on this item. Thank you. Now is the time for uh, public testimony on public hearing item number five. I did receive one speaker card from Brad Anderson. Thank you again, Brad Anderson, City Ranch Mirage. I wanted to speak on this public hearing item. Um, my concerns, I guess, it's great that you're adjusting your rates. Uh, my understanding now, because I'm the one, the one percenter that does uh, participate in this program, uh, and my understanding from your staff report is I'm actually paying less than your your other uh, participants uh, right now until you do this rate adjustment which is a half a percent savings from the Southern California Edison. And I remember when you started this with the big hype. Well, actually, I wrote, some, I wrote uh, a public comment, and it's on the public record, and I won't go over that again. But uh, I guess I'm concerned because what I hear, you're promoting uh, aspects of the program, and, and I don't recall Southern California Edison doing that. Uh, they were just probably cut rates and save people money versus uh, raffling a bike sticker or, or a lucky bike, I guess. So anyway, you can run your program however you want, but I'm, I'm fearful that maybe public monies are being spent that from all the taxpayers uh, to fund this program uh, versus just to rate payers, and that's all I have. Thanks. That was the only speaker card. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak on this item? That was the only speaker. Thank you, Christy. Do we have any council comments on um, Jessica's report? Uh, Mayor, let me uh, make this comment. Uh, Jessica, when we uh, adjust rates, uh, it's normally consistent with uh, Southern California Edison changing their rates and or they have changed their exit fees. Uh, is that normally the time that then we, in order to maintain any sort of a, a balance and an advantage 
uh, that we adjust our rates as well. Yes, that is the RMA process for rate adjustment. Great, thank you. And I do have uh, one more question, Jessica. So I, I understand and appreciate, I believe it's over a fairly long period of time that those exit fees slowly die down and eventually disappear. And as that time goes by, isn't it likely that the difference between our rate and Southern California Edison's rates will probably improve? Is that correct? That is the plan and that is correct. Where you have about four more years of the majority of those exit fees will be gone. Okay, all right, and those exit fees do bounce around sometimes from year to year. So that causes uh, the differential between our rates and the SCE rates to, to change from one year to the next, is that correct? So those SCE rates um, on the PCIA, that exit fee, do adjust, yeah. um, and we take those into consideration, deduct it from the generation before we apply the discount. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. City Manager, isn't it the case that we knew about this long ago when we started our MEA, that it would take a long period of time for those exit fees to decline and for our rate differential to improve? Yeah. So, you know, long period of time for maybe customers, but in the life of a government, we thought that that was a very doable scenario looking at about a 10 year period. Great. Okay, any other comments? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to compliment Jessica for her vigilance on maintaining, uh, watching over those fees and the dynamics involved in all of that. Uh, it's, you do a good job, thank you. Michael, would you like to make the motion? I move that the City Council adopt resolution number 2024, next in order, adjusting electric generation rate schedule for Rancho Mirage Energy Authority Community Choice Aggregation Program. We have a second. I'll second that. Moved and seconded, please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. We will now go on to the next public hearing, which is agenda item number six. Uh, the subject is approval of purchase and sale agreement with Porcupine Properties LLC for the disposition of remnant 10,055 square foot housing authority owned property. The subject property is located at the eastern boundary of Rancho Mirage Community Park. This, uh, the staff report will be re delivered by our Director of Public Works, Ryan Stendell. Ryan. Good afternoon, council members. Um, I have a slide deck that'll be pulling up right here if you'll bear with me. Again, staff's, rec uh, staff's report is requesting authorization of a purchase and sale agreement with Porcupine uh, Properties LLC to dispose of approximately 10,000 square foot remnant lot, which I'll do a little bit of uh, uh, screenshots to show you where we're talking about. So what you're seeing here on the screen for the benefit of anybody in the room, this is Ranch Mirage Community Park, San Jacinto Drive, uh, labeled on the screen, what we're talking about this afternoon is a very small triangular parcel at the eastern boundary outside the gates of the park. Let's take a little bit of a deeper dive. In the summer of 2023, Porcupine Properties reached out and asked the city if we had any interest in disposing of this property. Um, while use is not part of this action this evening, they believe it is a suitable uh, private well site, um, which the use will be handled at a later date. So. Just to go into the terms of the agreement briefly and very high level, we're talking about approximately a 10,000 square foot unimproved parcel at a purchase price of or at $50,000, which is slightly above appraised valuation. We think it's important to note that we used the appraiser that CVWD uses for um, evaluating right of way along the Whitewater River Channel. All proceeds from any uh, sale would stay with the Housing Authority Fund. And again, as noted in the resolution, the sale of property is exempt from CEQA guidelines. All CEQA determinations will be down, uh, taken care of downstream when an actual use is proposed. So uh, that's my very brief staff report. Again, this is a, a remnant parcel at the eastern edge of Ranch, Ranch Mirage Community Park that has little to no use to the city or housing authority. And we'd recommend approval of the attached purchase and sale agreement. I'd be happy to entertain any questions if the council has any. Thank you, Ryan. I'll ask the city clerk to please handle public comment. Thank you. Now's the time for any public testimony on public hearing item number six. I have one speaker card, Brad Anderson. Hi again, Brad Anderson, City of Ranch Mirage. Is this uh, concerning what the staff report was just talking about? Uh, selling a piece of property. Actually, I spoke on this topic back on September 7th. That's a key date today, I guess. So, uh, 
and that was a closed session topic. I wrote, uh, I writ, I written, <laughs> so I can't believe my English today. I wrote uh, a statement and it's submitted in the public record, just more or less highlighting what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, and at that meeting, it was a closed session topic about uh, terms and sale of this piece of property, which I had no idea about and I don't think anybody would. Uh, and then the staff report doesn't reflect exactly what took place uh, because the public was unaware of this uh, activity until today or until the uh, agenda was posted, or I wasn't anyway. Uh, it may have went through other committees. I'm not aware of that. Uh, so I, I, I'm afraid I'm at a disadvantage other than the staff report to comment on this. But I'm concerned because that is adjacent to a public park in the city and and it's a government owned land, which is a city owned or housing authority, which you're acting on behalf of today. It should be really part of that parcel or part for public use. And this is a private entity, Porcupine uh, Creek properties or whatever they call themselves. I don't want them coming after me. Uh, so I think they're a great operation and, and we're honored to have them in the city. But again, it was stated likely that it's gonna be a potential well site and, and also in the agreement, there's talk, or part of this agreement, part of this, what you're voting on today is an easement for them to pump water up to the resort. Uh, this should really be more transparent than it is. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm opposed to it as presented just because it's not transparent and, and it should have been, RFP should have been put out if you're actually, if, if it's actually is surplus government land, which, I don't think it was until somebody showed interest in it. And and I guess that's all I'm gonna talk about on that. Uh, I think I hit all my high points. Again, I, I did submit written comments. Uh, and the $50,000, that's a pretty good deal for Ransom Mirage. And that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this public hearing item? That was the only speaker. Thank you, Christy. Any council comments or questions on this item? Seeing none, I will ask for a motion. I'll make a motion, Mr. Mayor, that the Housing Authority Board adopt resolution number 2024-HA next in order approving a purchase and sale agreement for the disposition of portions of assessor parcel number 684-150-011 and 684-150-011. Dash one five zero dash zero two five as amended by lot line adjustment, case number twenty three dash zero six, subject to final review and approval by of the executive director and general counsel in finding the action exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Please vote. Motion carries five zero. Thank you, Christy. Next, we move to the action calendar. And first item on the action calendar is agenda item number seven. Uh, the subject is Rancho Mirage Energy Authority Reserve Policy. And again, we have senior management analyst Jessica Pulliam to present the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This item I'm presenting now is a reserve policy specifically related to the activities for the Rancho Mirage Energy Authority. The purpose of the proposed policy is to provide guidance on maintaining reasonable levels of reserves in the RMA Enterprise Fund. The energy market is volatile and regulatory requirements are expected to continue as the state moves towards meeting its goal of having all California energy be 100% carbon free renewable energy by 2045. Having adequate reserves will be necessary to continue to serve our residents and to meet goals. This policy will address the specific unique operational needs of RMEA separate from the city's general fund policies. It will help guide current and future allocation levels to various reserve categories setting out specific target amounts. The policy will establish a hierarchy for funding each reserve category, prioritizing rate stabilization, strategic infrastructure investment, cash flow, and economic uncertainty reserves. As of March 2024, RMEA has existing reserves and is more than halfway towards meeting the rate stabilization goal of 50% of operational revenue. This concludes my presentation and I'm available to address any questions. Thank you, Jessica. I'll ask the city clerk to handle public comment. Thank you. I do have one speaker card on item number seven, Brad Anderson. Again, thank you, Brad Anderson, City Ranch Mirage. Uh, 
I guess uh, my, my main concern about this is uh, it's odd. I'm looking at this as a whole new reserve fund. I don't know if it is or if it's just adding aspects to the existing reserve fund. Uh, and and I guess my point would be that a reserve fund or any kind of fund to prop up that organization or that program uh, should have been done uh, from the beginning, and I'm sure it has been. And and I understand that you did have to dip into the general fund to uh, preserve that program for a while. Uh, again, that's everybody's tax money going for this program. Uh, so that's my concern with that. Uh, I know DCE, Desert Energy, whatever it is, Desert Community Energy, I think it is, uh, out of Palm Springs. It's really just a Palm Springs organization now. Um, I think they have $12 million on credit running that organization, and that's, I, I don't have high hopes for its, for its success, I guess, and I hope that's not the case with this. Uh, so hopefully it's well managed. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't have enough details to to either promote this or not, but I think you should have reserve funds and, and they should be adequate for to support that program. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, any other comments? Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak on this item? That was the only speaker. Thank you, Christy. Any council comments on the establishment of these reserve funds? I'll make a motion, uh, Mayor, if I may, that the City Council approve the recommended reserve policy for Rancho Mirage Energy Authority. And I'll second. Moved and seconded. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Okay, next uh, item on the action calendar is agenda item number eight. The subject is resolution orth authorizing the city manager to make certain limited adjustments to customer power generation rates for Ranch Mirage Energy Authority. And we're keeping Gen uh, Jessica busy today because the staff report is again delivered by senior management analyst Jessica Pulliam. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I promise this is my last item for the day. <laughs> Uh, city staff and RMEA technical consultants continually review the SCE rate proposals to determine if the RMEA rate should be adjusted accordingly. SCE is adjusting their rates more and more frequently. Sometimes these changes are very, very minor, and other times they have a larger impact. If adjustments are deemed necessary, it requires several months of analysis and planning and time to take it and bring it before council for approval. Typically, it takes two to three months for the rates to take effect, which can cause RMEA rates to be out of alignment with SCE for several months at a time, impacting operational revenues potentially or customer savings. To address fluctuations and ensure timely rate adjustments, staff is recommending that City Council authorize the City Manager to make limited adjustments to RMEA power generation rates if necessary. Before implementing any rate adjustment, the city manager must reasonably determine if the adjustment is necessary, written notice must be provided to affected customers, and adjustments will be limited, ensuring that any major changes to rates still come before council for approval. This rate setting policy aims to continually provide rate competitiveness, rate stability, and revenue sufficiency. In light of this information, staff is recommending that the city council approve this item, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Jessica. I'll ask City Clerk to please handle public comment. Thank you. I have one speaker card from Brad Anderson. Thank you, Brad Anderson, City of Rancho Mirage. Uh, I'm absolutely opposed to the city manager having this authority over this organization, over this program. Uh, uh, the track record was not good. Uh, the city council should be uh, one presenting this or uh, approving any rate increase or rate decrease like they actually do now, like we're actually talking about in the prior item. Uh, I understand the limitations would be 5% plus or minus, and that's a lot. Uh, and I understand this takes a, a, a substantial amount of time, three or four months or uh, two months or three months to do this, but it still would take the same amount of time. And I can't foresee a city council meeting that's every two weeks that it would be brought up in a timely manner for the citizens or for the rate payers, I should say, uh, to be notified of that. So I'm absolutely opposed to the city manager having this authority. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? That was the only speaker. Thank you, Christy. Any council comments? Well, I do have a comment, uh, and the comment is that um, uh, in past years, for the most part, 
uh, Southern California Edison rates increased at a less frequent rate, rate than they do today. They are far more frequent. I think, Jessica, you mentioned something like four times or so in the last year or so. And when these uh, rates change, they require us to review our, our MEA rates, and it takes time to get that accomplished. So uh, this is simply a uh, time and labor saving issue. It takes time for it to come to council, and it just makes sense to me uh, to, um, I'm gonna vote yes on this. It makes sense to me to give the uh, city manager the approval to act more quickly since things happen more quickly in today's world than they once did. So I have no problem uh, uh, with the provision, of course, as Jessica discussed, that it will be uh, limited authority within a range. So uh, that, that's fine with me, and I think this is something that we should pass. Uh, all right, may I have a motion? I'm happy to make the motion that the City Council adopt resolution number 2024 next in order, authorizing the City Manager to make certain limited adjustments to customer power generation rates for the Rancho Mirage Energy Authority, parentheses, RMEA. I'll second that. Motion and second, please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, last item on the uh, action calendar subject. Uh, this is uh, agenda item number nine. Subject is fiscal year 2023-2024 mid-year budget adjustments. Uh, the uh, staff report, we have uh, Joseph Carpenter, who is Assistant Director of Administrative Services, and Kofi Antobam, who is Director of Administrative Services, and uh, Kofi and Joseph, I guess I'll let, I'll let you guys figure out who's going to go first. You know, Joseph has this one. He does, okay. Yeah. Well, I see your name here, so I wanted to read it. <laughs> I pass it over to Joseph. <laughs> you good do have seniority, Kofi. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Annually, the Finance Division, in collaboration with the Director of Administrative Services and the City Manager, conducts a mid-year review of revenues and expenditures to identify significant changes that have occurred or may be expected to occur prior to the end of the fiscal year. The primary objective of this review is to perform a divisional analysis of the general fund and identify items that may have a material impact on the current budget. Today's presentation will provide a summary of the general fund budget and highlight the proposed fiscal year 2023-2024 mid-year budget adjustments. The current operating budget adopted by City Council on June 1st, 2023, includes approximately $33.8 million in revenue and $33 million in expenditures. Staff is proposing mid-year adjustments of $110,000 to operating revenues and $95,000 to operating expenditures, which would increase the projected operating surplus by $15,000 from approximately $827,000 to $842,000. Details of these proposed operating budget adjustments will be covered over the next two slides. As detailed on page 9-2 of the staff report, staff is recommending an increase to budgeted operating revenues of $110,000. Staff anticipates the city will receive $405,000 more in property tax related revenues, $410,000 less in development related fees, and $115,000 more in other miscellaneous revenues. Staff is requesting to increase budgeted general fund operating expenditures by $95,000. General fund operating expenditures are broken down into three object groups, personnel, which includes salaries and benefits, operations and maintenance, and department equipment. Total general fund salaries and benefits are anticipated to be under budget at year end due to the timing of filling vacant positions. Required budget adjustments for individual divisions will be brought to the City Council for consideration with year-end budget adjustments. The $95,000 increase in the operations and maintenance object level is comprised of budget adjustments in two divisions. A $40,000 increase in building and safety for contracted inspection services related to development agreements, which are 100% paid by developers, and a $55,000 increase to public information, community relations, and special events, and amphitheater programming, and festival of the arts for equipment rentals. The general fund summary displays the impact of the proposed budget adjustments to the general fund. In addition to the previously discussed operating budget adjustments, there are also proposed adjustments to non-operating revenues and expenditures. A reduction in state grants of $432,500 to account for a grant that is now anticipated to be received next fiscal year 
and a reduction of $4.3 million in federal grants as this reimbursement from FEMA for the Great Prates program was received last fiscal year. Staff is also requesting a $2 million reduction in non-operating expenditures as the Vista del Sol Street Improvements Project is now anticipated to start construction next fiscal year. As shown on your screen, outlined in green, the adopted general fund budget, including both operating and non-operating budgets, projected net use of reserves in the amount of approximately $875,000. The budget adjustments discussed this afternoon intend to increase the net use of reserves approximately $2.7 million, resulting in a revised net use of reserves estimate of $3.6 million. The last slide in this presentation will show this net use of reserves affects the city's general fund reserves. The city started the fiscal year with approximately 67.1 million in general fund reserves. And after accounting for the $3.6 million net use of reserves, staff estimates the city will end the fiscal year with approximately $63.5 million in general fund reserves. For clarity, unassigned fund balance are funds that have not been committed for specific use and are available for any purpose while funds in the city's six reserve accounts have a specific commitment and can only be used for that purpose unless modified by the city council. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time and consideration this afternoon. Staff is available for any questions. Thank you, Joseph. And I'll ask uh, the city clerk to please handle public comment. Thank you. I did not receive any speaker cards for this item. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? No speakers. Thank you, Christy. Any council comment? No other than the fact that how fortunate we are to be in a position to have a $63 million reserve fund. Very fortunate. Thank you, Ted. Uh, and thank you for that report from our Assistant Director of Administrative Services. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> There's a reason I mentioned that. Uh, Joseph was re recently promoted to that title. So thank you, Joseph. All right. Uh, may I have a motion and a second? I'll be happy to do that, that the City Council adopt resolution number 2024 next in order, amending the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. I'll, and I'll second. second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. That brings us to the end of our agenda. Before we recess into uh, closed session, I'll ask the city, man or city attorney rather to please summarize what we will discuss in closed session. Thank you, Mayor. We'll be convening into closed session um, with under conference with legal counsel, existing litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1, case name being vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage et al, v. City of Rancho Mirage et al, case number CVRI 2100368, and public employee performance evaluation pursuant to California government code section 54957, the public employee, the city manager slash executive director. Thank you, Colin. We are recessed into closed session. Okay, we are uh, out uh, of recess and back into open session. And before I adjourn the meeting, I will ask the city attorney to please summarize discussion in, clo in closed session. Thank you, Mayor. There was no reportable action taken today. Thank you, Colin. This meeting is adjourned.